Hello and welcome to Self Publishing Insiders. This is Mark Leslie Lefebvre. I am the Director of Business Development with Draft to Digital, and I'm honored to have in the virtual studio with me Robin Peterman of the Magic and Mayhem Universe. Robin, welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here, Mark. It is awesome to get to chat with you. Now, I want to get into the Magic and Mayhem Universe and, and all of the amazing things you're doing, but I first want mm -hmm. to get into so Robin Peterman. As a writer, when did when did this all start for you? How did you get into writing? Um, with a lie, um, most of my grown-up life, I was an actress. I was a professional actress. I've done Broadway, television, film. And after I had my kids, it didn't make as much sense to me anymore. So I had to kind of refigure out what I wanted to do. And I'd always written. Um, I used to do what I used to punch up jokes when I was an actor, which means punch up scripts, which means write jokes. And I did some for television, for film, for so, but I'd never finished a book ever. Um, and I decided in my late forties, that's, I was going to try, I was going to write a book. I told my husband, I was going to write a book. He's like, go on with your bad self. And, um, I did. And, um, I sent it out everywhere and nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted it. So I joined a writer's group and went to a con a romance convention. It was RT, which doesn't exist anymore. Which Romantic is Times, right? Yeah. Yeah. I loved that one. Anyway, I was there. I was unpublished with a couple girlfriends from Kentucky in my writing group. And the there was a thing called Pitch a Palooza. And it's agents and publishers. And it's a big room. And you've got like three minutes to sit down. And then a bell rings. And then you go to another table and you pitch. And they were looking for a contemporary romance, which is not what I wrote at all. But I thought, what do I have to lose? So I made up a book. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. on the spot, book. you made it up. Well, no, I made it up right before it all happened. Okay. So I had something in my head. And um, I, I lied, basically. And everybody was laughing. And, and like, I would say 12 or 14 different people asked for the full manuscript. So... I lied some more and I was like freaking out on the inside. I'm like, well, okay. I said, I have to go home and get it professionally edited, which meant write it. And, and then I'll send it to you in three weeks. So, so, <laughs> so I went home and I wrote a 95 K book in three weeks. Um, wow. I got the shingles after that, which I, I don't recommend my method. I no. unfortunately probably do it again, but, and then I got offers from uh, several different places and I went with a three book deal with Kensington. So I started okay. out traditional. So my, yeah, my entry into publishing was a, based on a lie, a big fat hairy wow. lie. But as an actress, I was good. I, you know, I was good at talking to people, pitching. I was like, wow, well, you know. Um, yeah, so that that is literally how I started, literally. So that is, I, I love that. So I, I've got to ask for the parallel between going to an audition or pitching the book. Was it, was it a very similar experience? Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't really, look, if somebody told me when I was young that I wouldn't be an actress my entire life, I would have told them they were insane. Right. Um, I, to me, I write very dialogue heavy to start with. To me, writing is not much different than acting, except I don't have to like get Botox and sh stuff like that. I feel it just, it, it's, it's, it's about becoming somebody else, which was what acting was to me. Writing is the same thing. Um, diving into people, understanding motivations, situations. So it's for me, I, I, I think I'm happier being a writer than I ever was as an actress. And I can wear sweatpants and Ugg boots and profane t-shirts and sit on my back porch, no makeup and, you know, write books. And it's, it was a great job being a mom too. I mean, I wrote a lot of books sitting at lacrosse practice, soccer practice outside wow. of the dance school. I mean, I, when I get stuck too, sometimes I don't really have writer's block to say, cause I pants. So if I, if nothing's coming, I know I took a left turn and I should have taken a right, but I'll go sit in my car in the driveway and write because there's something 
I don't know, magical to about a car to me and writing. There you go. But that's how I started. Wow. And that so I started traditionally and then I went indie. Okay. <clears throat> uh, that is that is fascinating. I love I love the concept because when you're acting, uh, if you're if you're in a theatrical production, then obviously you've got to be at the a specific space for mm -hmm. rehearsals for all of those things. Mm -hmm. When you're when you're doing other other kinds of uh, acting, uh, where you have to be on set, uh, right? Very different. It. But 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 then all of a sudden, um, you're on your own, and you can set your own schedule. You can be creative when you want to, or when you need to, right? Mm -hmm. Sitting at practice, trying to fill in some space. I yeah. love the I love the parallel, but it it suddenly gives you more control. And then and then I wonder. So I'm curious about. So you were with a major publisher, obviously very successful at pitching and, and, and writing the books that they wanted, but then you moved indie. So was it that additional control that you were looking for? What was it that led you to explore the uh, the indie author community? I'll be extremely blunt, um, uh, financially speaking. Okay. Um, I had a fantastic artistic experience traditionally, loved my editor, loved the process, learned a whole lot. Right. Um, but the money is, was bad. I was, you know, I was an unpublished author. My contracts weren't great. Um, also too, my passion is paranormal, paranormal. And okay. at that point, traditional publishing saying vampires are dead, no pun intended there. <laughs> um, you know, and, and that's what I wanted to write. And I was like, all right, screw this. Um, I, I'll put it out myself. And I was also in this group of amazing women, my writer's group in Kentucky. I can't stress enough for authors. Having a, a group of people uh, is, is invaluable. And I thought, and they were strong, supportive, amazing women who I'm still very good friends with and would not be where I am without those friends. Um, uh, and I thought all female writers were like that. I was wrong. However, this group in particular had started going indie. So I was learning about this and watching it. And I thought, well, hell, I'm going to do it too. But I had this group of support where we kind of went together. And I it was fantastic. And I don't regret it at all. I never burn bridges. I'll never say I won't ever write traditional again. I've been offered traditional contracts again, but quite honestly, um, financially speaking, that would be a, a, a stupid move on my part. But again, never say, I never say never, you know, you know diversification is not a bad thing. And in, in the right. landscape of publishing, which is forever changing, it changes on a dime. You have to go with it. It's like a puzzle. And um, so th that's where I am right now. I, I would call myself 100% indie right now, right. but you know, if right, right. So, can... so that leads me to want to ask the the, the question. The inquiring minds want to know, yeah, what would it, what what kind of contract, what kind of offer would be something you would actually take seriously? Mm. I don't want to say numbers. Well, um, <laughs> I was I, I was even thinking to be certain clauses or what rights you get to keep. Maybe uh, that's what I would be thinking. Well, I look. I did my traditional contract with an entertainment lawyer initially, right. and um, not an agent. And so I kept my film rights. The my first book that I ever wrote got optioned for a film. Now it's right. sitting on a shelf somewhere. If, if I know shelf options do, yeah, really well. yeah. Um, but it's still under option. I'm still getting paid for that. It's probably never going to see the light of day as a film. However, um, I would want to keep my film rights. I'd want to keep my audio rights, and I would yeah. want a a um, an, an advance that shows that they have great faith in in the book. Right. I mean, an advance is a loan for the most part. If you really think about stuff, right. um, can be. Um, so that is an indication of how serious someone would take wanting to promote your book. Right. I really, I don't care if my books are in, I got offered a very bad deal at a place where they kept pushing that my books would be in, in Walmart and that would be great. But I also don't care. I mean, I can make a lot more right. doing what I'm doing. So, right. okay. 
Does that kind of answer that question? Yeah, yeah. See, I was thinking it would be a thing where you know you keep you keep the film rights, you keep the audio rights, you keep the ebook rights, and you say, well, if you want the mass market rights, I'll give you those. <laughs> Nobody, you know what? Nobody's going to do that. I know, but not yet. They're not, not yet. <laughs> no, no, not with me. So, and I am, I'm doing pretty good. Awesome, awesome. Looking good. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about that. I'm really excited about that. So you had this deal, uh, three books uh, with a major publisher, decided mm -hmm. to go in the, what was the first move you took uh, in order to, to uh, obviously listening to this wonderful uh, group, uh, this, this yeah. was it like, was it a, a local writers group or, yeah. or how, yeah. we were, they were originally um, a group of romance writers of America. Um, it was one of the chapters, right. but at that time, back in around 2013-ish or so. And it's changed. It's definitely changed over time. Um, but the feelings about indie writers were not positive. They were thought of as lesser than. So this group uh, left the Romance Writers of America and just formed their own thing. So it's that's how it initially, that's how I found it. I just went online because I promised myself once I re finished something, I would join a group of writers, but that was my, I always do that. I have lists. I'm a list maker. I never finish any of my lists, but I have a ton of them, but that's was on my list. If you finish this book, you can go join a group of other women. And that's what I did. And that's how all that started. Okay, cool. Cool. Now yeah. I have to, I know we're going to take questions from the live audience a little bit later, but, uh, but I have to, this, this, this comment from, Lexi Green says, all you pantsers share this magic, please. Now, I think Lexi is referring to you going in, uh, going in to pitch the book, going, okay, I'm going to come up with something and pitch it to them. So that also begs the question, uh, pantser or plotter? 100% pantser. Oh, because yeah, you're a list maker. You, uh, I'm what? You, you, you I'm said list, you, you, no, you. I'm a list maker of like stuff. I almost said a bad word. Of <laughs> stuff I have to do. If I plot a book, I won't write it. The hardest part of a book for me to write is the end because I already know what has to happen. There's a magic for me that happens in not knowing what comes next. And then, and then you, you know, as you write, when things click and you realize, oh my God, in chapter three, I left myself this enormous present that paid off in chapter 10. And it's, I'll just say, it's like an almost as good as an orgasm. I when like a puzzle pieces click there's so that for me is, is is the is the joy i mean i know who the characters are i know when i start a book it's not like i sit down and have no effing idea what i'm doing i know probably what will happen generally speaking but i'll tell you as i write that 360s itself um several times during the process and it surprises even me which, you know, then I have to write more to see what the heck happens. So it's not for everybody. Everybody's writing process is what it is. And whatever works for you is fantastic. But that's what works for me. If I had something down where I knew what I had to write in each chapter, it would feel like an assignment for me and the magic would go away. And I still, I'm always shocked. I'm always shocked when it clicks together. And it does. It somehow it has to knock on some wood for God's sakes. But um, that's yeah, that's my process. And that's why. And then it seems it doesn't seem that's why it doesn't seem much different than acting, because it's you discover all this stuff as you go. Um, and that's that's where I find my joy in this. Why? Why I still do it passionately. Did did you enjoy improv when you did stage? I did. I loved it. Loved it. Okay. Did a lot of it. I can imagine. And that resonates with me because again, I, I very rarely know what I'm going to write other than a high level view. And then, yeah, yeah. magic yeah. happens, right? The, it, it the, you sit down yes. and, and, and it happens for some mm -hmm. reason. Thank goodness it happens. God, I keep thinking, oh my God, is this the last one I'm ever going to have in me? <laughs> Every time I write a book, I'm like, oh my God, is this the last one? Yeah. Um, so there, you know, but that there's something about that fear that lights a fire under your butt too. It, it, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> well, possibly you, not the healthiest way to live, but that's how I live. Yeah. So, um, are you driven by deadline? Then, so you, for example, like, uh, hey, oh, I'll, I will take a look at your at your book that you've just pitched. Okay, I've got three weeks to write it. 
are you driven by deadline? Do you hire your editors in advance and all of that stuff to make sure that you can stick to that plan? Um, okay. My list that I make is always way overly ambitious. Like if I make okay. out what I'd <laughs> like to do for this year. And I have lately more this year and last year been driven by deadlines because um, I put pre or I don't always do this because I don't like to put myself in a hole, but I've done pre-orders of the next book. And so that in itself is a deadline of when you have to get it done. Plus um, I have a deal for audio where the audio comes out with it. So the book has to be done even earlier. So those deadlines have not been the most enjoyable things. I'd rather write what I want to write when I want to write it. Um, however, the series that I have ongoing, I feel, I still feel great passion for. So it's easy to jump, but yeah. So general, yeah, yes, I can be very driven by a deadline. I'm very, I am a prolific person. Um, and I do write very, I write very fast. Okay. So we, we, we've talked about the magic that happens, uh, in the mm -hmm. creative process for you. We've talked yeah. about humor because you do leverage humor, obviously, in this interview, and, and you talked about doing that in your pitch, for example. Mm -hmm. You write magic and humor a lot. I mean, a lot of that, right? So is that something that just comes natural to you, is writing in that genre? I like the lack of rules. I like I like, I like like all the tropes. I think they're interesting. and But then I like to turn a trope to fit me and my imagination. So my vampire's you know, don't necessarily burn in the sun. They, you know, there's different, right. I, I like to play with what's there and make it mine, whatever's in my imagination. So, and the lack of, because the, when I, the traditional series I wrote was contemporary. Um, and, uh, but they were still searching for Bigfoot in one of them. I mean, I can't help <laughs> myself. Uh, you know, I have an obsession with Bigfoot. I have, I, so there's, um, yeah, it's, I think it's the lack of rules and that you can do anything you want is extremely, uh, that's appeals to me. I think that's why I feel passion for paranormal. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, so you launched, uh, you launched your original series, Magic and Mayhem. That was a standalone Robin Peterman mm -hmm. uh, a, a series of books. Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, what happened that allowed you or um, to want to open it up to other writers uh, and work with other writers in the Magic and Mayhem universe? Okay, I already had I don't know four or five books in that series. There are ten now, and Amazon approached me. They had a program called Kindle Worlds at the time, and they approached me um, about that specific series and it becoming a Kindle World, and I was like. And so we talked a whole bunch and, um, and I did that. I did the Kindle worlds and I think maybe for two years, um, it was a Kindle world. And then all of a sudden, and I heard about this on social media, Kindle worlds ended. <laughs> and so that was a surprise. And, uh, so there were all these books that had my IP in them still and written by other people. Cause what a Kindle world was, and it's the same thing as what the universe is to a certain degree. It's similar to fan fiction. Um, they're taking their own stories and putting elements of the town that mad, that my series takes place in is called Ass Jacket, West Virginia. So they're taking either the town or some of my characters and they're weaving it into their stories. Some are very, very connected. Some are loosely connected. So that ended. And I told all the women and some men who had written in my Kindle world that if you want to take your books back, please do just remove my IP. I will help you promote it. I said, or if you want to hang on, hold them. I'm in talks with Drafted Digital. And uh, I said, I'm going to continue in a different way with a better contract for you guys. And but if you'll hang on. And then I was talking with Dan and I was talking with all you guys. And we I actually helped you guys develop the contract that we would use. And then I have my own contract and it's much better for the authors who do this. And I have people who have written series 
within the series, some people are up to 11 books, 16 books. People have stayed with me because I make it really fun. I work really hard and um, it's been, I'm kind of a, I kind of run a really well-oiled militaristic marketing machine for it. But on the same note, um, we also provide them with everything. They write their book, they do their cover, they get it edited. Everything else is provided. And then because you guys are my partner, it has made it very, very doable, very easy. I will say Tara, my bestie at Draft Digital, is um, a goddess, a goddess. So that's that's how I continued. And it became wide. The price point was higher. What um, the authors got was more. They are with me after a three-year stint. They're welcome to take their book back if they want to take out my IP, republish on their own. Nobody's done that um, because we. I also work really hard on uh, making sure their backlist continues to sell. And so, and, and I make money off of this too, and it helps sell my original series. So it's, it's a large undertaking and it's, I almost feel like I have, like I have a publishing company in partnership with you guys, aside from my own series that I write on my own. However, it, I enjoy the heck out of it because, and it's invite only. I invite people and people have approached me. Um, and if it's a great fit, I welcome them into my sandbox. Um, I have, and, and luckily so, and I, I hope that I say this with humility, even though it might not sound humble, but I have a long waiting list of people who have asked to join it and you can't let it get out of control or it ceases to be special. So that's, that's kind of what it is. And that, and it, we come out twice a year, every June, every October, every April, once women and men have a certain amount of books, we put out collections of theirs, three books. Um, we are doing something brand new that I've told you about, but I'm going to still keep it a secret mark for a little bit come next August. Cause you and I might do a, a docu podcast about it and it might blow up in my face in a really skanky, ugly way, but we'll see. It'll be funny. It that um, just increases the ratings. Yeah. I can <laughs> watch this, watch this become a shit show. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's what it is. I take it very seriously. I take people's participation very seriously and I make sure they're treated like I would want to be treated. Right. Awesome. But, and, and so again, I'm going to pop up another comment. This is from Ronnie yeah. who says it's always fun with you, Robin, because that is one of the other things is it is a fun process. It's very organized. It's very strategic, but it's also fun, right? It, yeah. Yeah. I, it's me. I don't have other people run my stuff. Right. I do right. it. I do it. And I have relationships. I, oh my God, I have so many relationships with, and see, you can't pay for cross promotion. Cross promotion yeah. is one of the most valuable things an author can have, especially if it's same, similar genre. And those are things you can't pay for. And that's what this does. There have been friendships that have been developed between people who are writing my universe that didn't know each other that then go on. I mean, they're all, it's a, it's a, it's a positive experience. You know, I make sure if I'm good, if I feel bitchy about something, nobody hears about it <laughs> except my husband. Um, you know, it's, you know, I treat people like I would want to be treated. Yeah. So, Perfect. And yeah. so the way that this works is for people who, who work in your universe, when they go to set up a book at draft to digital, they've already been granted the ability to be part of the magic and mayhem universe. Mm -hmm. So when they go to publish a book, they identify it as a magic and mayhem universe book. And then what happens uh, just so people can understand who yeah. have never participated in this, which would probably be most authors. <laughs> yeah. Is, um, because it's in your universe, you keep a portion of the sales of that author's book. The author gets yeah. paid directly by D to D you get paid directly by D to D. And that way you don't need to worry about getting these spreadsheets from 16 different uh, libraries okay. and retailers and then going, That's okay. <laughs> That's the only way I would have done it. It's the right. only way that was uh, something that wouldn't take up my entire life. Having you guys as a partner that you guys do the royalty divide, you do the tax paperwork, you do the distribution. We're all making money. Um, and that was 
the only way I would do this. There were some people that took their Kindle Worlds and did it completely on their own, but that means hiring tax people. That means hiring uh, payroll. That mean, you know. So to me, that was that was a no go, which is why I wanted so much for it to work out with us and being able to go forward, which it did in a such and such an open. I, I will say that because I didn't want a contract that looked anything like what we had had before with Kindle Worlds because I didn't, it wasn't good for the, it wasn't, there was no, the fact that I got so many people to write for me while it was a Kindle World kind of surprised me because it wasn't a great deal. Right. And you right. didn't own your stuff. And so I wanted all that different. And that's, that's what, actually the person who wrote my personal contract writes in my universe. And she's right. a mentor. It's Monet Michaels. She's a huge mentor to me. And when I gave her the bullet points of what I wanted my personal contract for the writers to be, she goes, okay, this is fantastic for the people writing in your universe. And it kind of sucks for you. Let's fix this. I was like, <laughs> okay. Great. So, you know, so, you know, everything's out front. The contract was actually written by someone who's having to abide by it. So I, it's, it all, it feels comfortable to everybody. I made, right. I wanted that to be clear. You know? Yeah, and, and I have to say, uh, also, um, you're not the only one who who loves Tara. Uh, she is very well regarded <laughs> inside and outside the company. But also, um, you know, thank you as well uh, because it's feedback and, uh, and and details like that from authors, you know, strategic business partners like yourself that mm -hmm. help draft a digital create things. Because you know, you had an issue, you had a problem, you had something that you needed to do. Yeah. And we kind of collaborated together to come up with that. So thank you, because that has also helped other other authors in a similar situation to yourself and people who wanted to write in other universes. So yeah, so Dan, Dan was instrumental in that. And he was way open to hearing everything. And yeah. we went through several versions of stuff before we all thought it was good. And he was great. It was great. Yeah. Which is why he just continually rises up in the ranks of drafted digital <laughs> um, oh, you guys and why i always buy him beer when we're together but uh See? so See? I, I, I have to ask so you you're writing you you enjoy the writing you have a lot of fun with the stories you have a lot of fun with the collaborations and the partnerships mm -hmm. i worry i would worry or i'm worried for you is running this business and managing this this empire this uh, magic and mayhem universe for so many <laughs> different authors how and where does Robin find the time for her own writing? Dude, if you talk to anyone in my family, um, I have a balance problem. I write all the time. I write all the time. Um, I also have, I don't even like the word assistant. I like, there's a, a gal who works with me. I call her name is Wanda. I call her my magic Wanda. Um, she does a all of my graphic material. And so, and we work our asses off around when the, you know, the universes are coming out because we provide pre-order material, uh, release material. We, and we work all year round. I am a good um, multitasker, I would say. And I also, um, and I've been doing the universe for a while now. So we, through Wanda and I, and also Tara and I have, we have developed what works because we, you know, boo-boos happen. We've had people upload the wrong book. We've had people upload the wrong cover. And so we have a system now where they give them to me first. <laughs> and then <laughs> Wanda goes through them to make sure it's what it's supposed to be. We check their back matter, their front matter. So it all looks very professional. And then Tara and I spend a day together and Tara uploads. So we have worked out what uh, works for us, which is why Tara also gets an edible arrangement after every universe launch because <laughs> she can backdoor boo-boos. And uh, so, yeah. So you know what, Mark, because um, I've been doing it for a while, I know what has to be done, but then I'm always trying to think of one new thing per, that's what I do with my own career too, is what has nobody done yet? Or what, and I don't have, I have zero fear of failing. Right. Yeah. Look, if you fear failure, you're not going to do anything. If I, if something doesn't work, it doesn't work. So what? I'll do something else. Um, 
my dad, who's hilarious and a real renegade, told my brothers and myself, he goes, make them love you, make them hate you, don't let them forget you. And so I, that's kind of my motto in life. I mean, my work, my, my books, I have people that are rabid. I have people that can't stand me, but rarely would they forget it. So that's, that's what I do. So anyway, yeah, I, I don't know how I do everything. I, I joke that I run a corporation on my back porch in sweatpants with crappy internet, which is <laughs> the truth. And um, yeah, sometimes do I feel overwhelmed? Absolutely. Absolutely. But um, I can't think of a better job than what I have. I love oh, it. Excellent. I love it as much as I love acting. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So uh, you release, you do two major releases in this universe every year. One of them is right now, front, isn't it? It was Monday. Yeah, Monday, this, Monday, this Monday, Monday, you you launched like, how many books? Can can you talk a little bit about what's out there now? Like, Yeah, what, there's four, 14 came out and I actually have started releasing with my universe now because I have several other series going and um, <clears throat> we have 14 books out. If you look at any of my social media, it's all over it. We have our own website, the magic and mayhem, magic and mayhem universe.com. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's kicking. And, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm in the middle of it. I mean, I was laughing. I was like, Oh my God, this week is the hairiest week I have this year so far. But, um, uh, what do you want to know? It's they're hilarious. It's amazing women. Um, we're all over the place. You can check out magic and mayhem universe on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Pinterest. Our social media is fantastic and heavy and, um, I don't know. We're having fun. We're still, there's a feature uh, on each of those authors every day now on Facebook where you can get to know everybody. We had a massive uh, release day in my fan room where all my authors did takeovers and it was nuts and there were prizes and it was crazy. Um, it's just fun. It's fun. Everybody's having fun. And it's easy. <laughs> In the book awesome. Story. I love that. I love so that. Now freedom. I'm going <laughs> I'm going to start to pop up some comments and questions from the live audience. Uh so this is uh what was this? Uh Lynn just wanted to share uh hi, so excited to hear your voice and see your face. Lynn has a book in this Lynn is is in England and um we haven't spoken spoken. We talk all the time right. via this. She's a doll, she's a terrific writer and she should be checked out definitely. Awesome. Definitely. Thank you. Um a comment from Virginia is that vanity is what they used to call us back before <laughs> indie was taken seriously. Yeah, Virginia is correct. And Virginia also writes for the universe. She's not in this particular launch, but she is a repeat writer in there. She's a fabulous human. And she's right. It was called Vanity Press, but that's when you would get print off a bunch too and sell them out of the trunk of your car. Um, no, independent publishing are real authors. They're some fabulous authors and uh, it's a real business. Awesome. Awesome. Now, I do have a question from our very own Alyssa at yes. Digital. She says, I have to respect the hustle. I mm -hmm. want to hear more about this well-oiled marketing machine. Can you share some secret sauce, Robin? I will say, nobody's going to want to hear this part, but it's the person who's running it actually being involved, seriously okay. hands-on, is very important because then I think that it creates an atmosphere where people feel cared about willing to go the extra mile i mean the authors who write for me it's me <laughs> and they know it's me and right. i make a plan I, I am anally clear with directions i we do coordinated newsletter blast coordinated pre-order newsletter blasts um we have i mean i give them dates days that things are to be used you know we do i think that clear directions and a hands-on approach um and see there are tons of things that wanda and i do that they don't see wanda and i spend days figuring out color schemes and backgrounds and we do puzzle covers and we do gifts and we do trailers, you know, we, and we pick out together. I mean, Wanda does that physical work because 
I don't have any desire to learn it, but I know what I like. So it's like, I will never be a cover artist because that's not my forte, but I see very clearly what, you know, what I want things to look like. I just can't physically do it. So there's, yes, there's a buttload of work that goes into it, but I would say hands on. And I would also say branding is a very important part. If you yeah. look at something that we put out, it is really clear, really clear. And I don't require the gals who write gals and guys who write in my universe to use a, a certain cover artist. They can use whoever they want. I have a list of suggestions if they need help. Okay. Um, but they know just taking a look at our website, they can say, oh, okay, it's in this flavor or look at the original series and know the flavor that these kind of books look like. But then as far as like the branding on my side goes for what our materials look like, that's extremely important too. Right. So the branding is that's, that's not just uh, the look and feel like the recommended artists. Um, it's the logo. You've got the magic and mayhem it's, logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we put that on so it doesn't end up warped or like, you know, they have a cover template that knows this corner's right. open, you know, I mean, right. let's, those are like the little inner underneath things that, um, you wouldn't really think about, but since we've been doing it for a while, we know all that, you know, um, we use the, um, links from our website when we promote so that you go to the website. So then if a reader's there for a certain author and they go, Oh, wait a minute, well, that looks really cute. So that's another way of cross promotion. You know, it's, we, I think this through, I think it through. Cool. Awesome. I love that. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm, I'm curious about the communications. You had 14 books that were released this month. Obviously, there was a lot of work leading up to that. A lot of different moving parts. Mm -hmm. Are you using, how are you communicating? You said uh, you, you weren't talking to uh, Lynn, was it by email, uh, by, by phone? Is it mostly email? How how do you coordinate all this? Face, Facebook, baby. Facebook, um, okay. Yeah, private rooms on Facebook. And I do okay. one, one per launch. So it's just us in there. It's not an ongoing from prior it's just us all the information is in there we sing happy you know it's happy birthday when somebody's birthday it's okay you know, people can put whatever they want to put in there but that's that's the cleanest way and then i, I use email and stuff as well because facebook warps you know graphics right. but yeah okay, so it's a facebook, cool. facebook room awesome awesome uh we have a question creative question from Virginia, Virginia asks you, uh, what triggers a story for you? For example, what what bites you and makes you want to tell a particular story? My brain, that's a good question. My brain is really crowded. And if I, it's, if I didn't write, I would probably need to be institutionalized. There's so much. And I, I, I have a folder on the computer, but it's like the start of a kajillion different things and its thoughts. And the, so I don't, you know, I can't, I can't, there's no one thing. Um, like, I mean, you know, I have on running series. I have the hot damn series. I have magic and mayhem series. I have um, good to the last death and I have magical midlife um, series. So I have four on running series. So I kind of know that I'm going to hit each of those and at least in semi the kind of order. So it's just me. I guess it's just being back with those characters. I'll always reread the last book from that series before I start a new one, because my worlds have so many different rules. I have to get back into that head and that voice. And then I just usually get excited and go, okay, what's going to happen to them? Let's see. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I love that. So you had mentioned earlier, uh, sometimes you needed that change of atmosphere, change of pace. You sometimes you, you did the car you found is a really great place for inspiration. So yeah. I would ask is the, the actual mechanical process of writing, is it on a keyboard? Do you do notepad and pen dictation? What what's how do you do it? Don't do dictation. I tried that and that was a hot mess. Um, I write on the computer and I also handwrite. Like if, if, if something is, like not working there's something about a really sharp and i use ticonderoga it's not a commercial for them but the, those are the pencils i like 
really sharp and a yellow legal pad. Okay. Here's a, here's a scary story. Um, when I pitched, I, when I was an actor, I was very fortunate. I was never a uh, household name, but I was always a working actor. I didn't know how to type. I never took typing in high school, like a dumbass. When I was in college, you could pay your, you know, sweet mate five bucks to type your term papers. And that's what I did. And so I also learned how to type when I wrote that book. I hand wrote that 95K word book. And then I sat down and I typed it, which was probably why I got the shingles. But, um, and shingles suck. Um, but yes, so the, yes, I type now. My kids laugh because I do not type correctly, but I'm like, you know what? You're going to college. So are, are you a, a, a single finger typer? No, or a... I'm more than one finger, but okay. I have to look at the keyboard. And okay. so, but sometimes if it's not happening, um, there's something about holding a pencil and right, there's something about a connection to paper that will sometimes break something for me, break through something for me. And so that makes sense. So I, those are the two ways that I write. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. So uh, Lexi's asking a question uh, about the universes. Uh, so with multiple writers creating in your universe, are there ways that they can specifically interact with or not interact with together to affect the greater universe as a whole? Like, like I guess the rules, like you can't. There, yeah, you, you can't kill my characters. Okay. I mean, that's they see that right up front. You can't kill my characters. Um, you know, what a lot of people, some of the people that have been extremely successful, I would say, um, with sales, because I think you're successful if you write a book. Quite honestly, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, they have mixed their own series characters that are already popular with their people and brought them in and mixed them up with mine. And then for a lot of those people, it's turned into a running little series within the series. Um, yeah, I have a rule. You don't kill my characters and that has been fine. You I mean, don't go make anybody pregnant or this or that or anything. And a lot of people, there's a character. Zelda is the main heroine. Um, she's a, a, actually started out as a very selfish, you know, magic abusing in a funny way, which, um, and then she's got her friend Sassy, who's been working on learning to speak Canadian for a couple of books. She's working on the languages of the world. I can help Canadian, her with that. Yeah. yeah. Canadian and British. She's having trouble with, but there are a couple characters that really, she has three, uh, cats, fat bastard, Django Fett and Boba Fett, who were cats of mine, who I immortalized in this book. They're no longer here, but they, they're used guys. They talk like this and they lick the bowls and the, you know, they're so, um, those guys get used in a lot of people's books. And then there's the head witch, Baba Yaga, who dresses from, you know, Madonna era, cone bras and rubber bracelets, and she's a hoot. So those are kind of my characters that tend to get dropped into other people's stories. Or they'll use Ass Jacket, West Virginia, and something will go on there. So, yeah, the only rule I have is you can't kill my characters. And awesome. uh and then the way the second part of that question, how these women are communicating with each other is in the Facebook room. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And a lot of them, actually, a lot of people that write in my universe are actually good friends of mine who are just amazing authors. And then th some of the newer people, newer friends that I have have been recommendations from other people, or they've approached me themselves, which with a really usually hilarious, pitch that's like i really want to write and here's why but then i look at them and the genre that they write because if somebody writes you know horror and has a following that way that doesn't really fit you know there are a couple of rules there's it's not erotica i don't write erotica is great if, you know if that's but that's not what the series is they need to read my series and make sure they connect to it and can write in a fun it doesn't have to match my stuff but it has to be a fun comedic paranormal happily ever after at the end like another rule there's no menage in this in these particular series menage books great it's not what the magic and mayhem that i write is about so those are some of the rules cool awesome thank you so we yeah. have less than a minute left but i did want to pop this up from ace adams who asks do you ever feel overwhelmed and wonder which project to pull out of the pile to work on and i guess the maybe the question there is if do you ever feel overwhelmed and how do you 
how do you deal with that? Like, how do you, what do you pull out first? I, yes, I do feel overwhelmed. And the first thing that I pull out of is laundry. And the second thing I, pull out of, no, um, yeah, but, um, like I said, it, it, I'm really lucky to get to do what I do and to be able to do it. Being overwhelmed is nothing new. It's in my personality anyway. And then I will just make my lists and check stuff off. If I don't get to everything, I don't get to everything. I'll get to it to the next day. Awesome. Well, Robin, you know what? Oh my God, that felt like two minutes. Or it did. That minutes. was really fast. Yeah. I know. That was a, such a fantastic conversation. Thank you. Thank so you. much for such an entertaining time that we got to spend this afternoon and uh, answering questions from folks. Uh, I guess, uh, where can people find out more about you? They can go to robinpeterman.com. Um, uh, they can go to magicandmayhemuniverse.com. Um, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, but I'm not. I, I had to pick my social media. So Facebook uh, is probably the best. There's an author page, personal page. There you go. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much, Robin. And thank you, dear listener, for tuning in to Self-Publishing Insiders. This is Mark Leslie Lefebvre. I am Director of Draft to Dig uh, Director of Business Development for draft to digital My privilege is I get to talk to wonderful folks like Robin. And uh, if you're looking for more, feel free to subscribe to us over on our YouTube channel. You can follow us over on Facebook as well. And again, Robin, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And I want you to write in my universe. I'm just putting it out there on social. On, <laughs> oh, my God. The honor continues and gets bigger yeah. and bigger. Well, we're going to talk. We're going to talk. Thanks, Robin. All <laughs> Have right. a great afternoon. You too.